On today's Two on Your Side Town Hall, the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine grows more dire by the day. The invasion now in its 12th day, with many continuing to flee Ukraine to neighboring countries. We're going to take you to the border with Poland for an update on that tonight. Plus, you've seen the scam dozens of times, but is a new email promising more protection on Facebook legit? A lot of you asked us about that. We're going to tell you about the message you need to be looking out for. And later, stressed mouth. The pandemic put a strain on our oral health. Tips from a dentist on how to get back on track. But we begin tonight's town hall speeding toward a new record. Gas prices are soaring. It's only going to get worse. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on that note. I'm Kate Welsh for Michael Wooten has the week off. And this is something, of course, that impacts everyone, whether you drive a car or not. So we're going to try to answer a lot of your questions about why this is happening, what's coming next. But first, here's a look at gas prices today by the numbers. Right now, according to AAA, the national average for a gallon of unleaded is $4.07. That is up 46 cents from last week. Compare that to this time last year when the price of a gallon of gas was, brace yourself, two seventy-seven. dollars Here in New York State, prices are soaring 19 cents higher than the national average at $4.26 per gallon, with western New York settling just slightly less at $4.21. That's just six cents below the record high for the region, which was $4.27 set in 2008. And joining us live to talk tonight is Elizabeth Carey. She is the Director of Public Relations and Communications with AAA of Western and Central New York. We're so glad that you're with us. And, you know, we are watching these prices soar. So we have a couple of questions. Just what is happening? What can we expect? And I think a lot of people looking at those numbers and saying, are we going to see $5 a gallon sooner rather than later? Yeah, and they're already seeing that out in California. So there's definitely a lot of pain at the pump right now. The main thing driving up these prices right now is oil prices. So this morning they were $130 per barrel. They're at about $120 per barrel right now. They fluctuate. Uh, in August, they were $30 per barrel. So that's the difference, $100 per barrel more since August. And at one point during the pandemic, they were either zero or negative territory. So that has a direct impact on what we pay at the pump. It's a dramatic change, and there's never a good time to have to take a hit like this in our budgets. But we're also getting into a time of year that gas prices typically start to increase anyway. So that kind of sounds like a perfect storm here. Is that the case? Yeah, normally we have some cheap gas prices, especially January, February, but they've been increasing every single week. Um, this is still a winter blend of fuel that refineries are making, and that's cheaper to produce than the summer blend of fuel. And the difference is how it evaporates at different temperatures. So in coming weeks and months, the refineries are going to have to switch to that summer blend of fuel. It usually takes place by April, uh, and that's going to be more expensive right there. So uh, we definitely will have to brace ourselves for that. And we're starting to see people get really upset. And you should see on social media, I'm posting pictures of the gas station and the high prices and they're pretty fed up with it right now. Yeah, and it's day after day after day. And we also know that as the weather gets warmer, people want to travel more and that's coming up quickly. We've got the April school breaks. Before we know it, the summer travel season is going to be here. So typically, how do increases like this affect people's travel plans? And do you expect to see something similar or is this getting to be so big that there could be a greater impact than we might normally see when there's high gas prices? Well, historically, a travel isn't impacted when the gas prices get high. I mean, back in 2008, uh gas prices were high, people still travel, but it's really hard to say what people will do this year. We do know there's a pent up demand for travel. So a lot of families will say, you know what, we want to go down south. Like you said, Easter's right around the corner and then those summer road trips are waiting. So it's still cheaper for a large family to pile in the minivan or the SUV and pay the money, fork over the money for the gas and go on vacation rather than buying flights forever. And especially if they want to go at peak weeks when school is out. So it's hard to say exactly, but we don't really, we haven't seen yet anyway, anyone canceling any trips, people still saying we want to go. We've missed out on vacations for a couple of years. We'll just maybe skip dinner out one night to stay on budget as far as uh, managing these gas prices. Yeah, sort of weighing all of those factors. And we are dealing again, really with a bunch of unknowns. There is a question mark on when prices may start to let up. But in the meantime, are there ways to save that are actually doable for most people? And do you think we'll see any significant changes in behavior over the next several months? 
Uh, usually when gas prices hit about 350, people would change their behavior at $4. I definitely expect people to change their behavior. They might ask to work remotely so they don't have to drive. They might consider an EV or a more fuel efficient vehicle or combine errands into one trip. But from a consumer standpoint, big box retailers, grocery store discounts, um, Seneca Nation territory, these are where you're gonna get the cheapest gas prices in the area. And a lot of people who we've noticed are using the AAA mobile app because it can let you know the cheapest gas prices in your area based on your location. So sometimes it's a difference of just driving around the corner and getting a cheaper price. So uh, people will continue to do that to try and save money when it gets this high. And quickly, I want to touch on something you said there, the idea of people being able to work from home. That is certainly, in this day and age, a big factor as maybe in the past when people didn't have that option where they were going to have to drive to work one way or the other. Yeah, and you know, a lot of employers are offering that flexibility or at least a hybrid schedule. You know, then you don't have to worry about using all this gasoline just to get to the office if it's the type of job that you can do from home. Of course, that depends on your occupation. And certainly we know this is something that affects so many people. We appreciate your perspective. We've been chatting with Elizabeth Carey of AAA of Western and Central New York. Elizabeth, thanks again for being here. Oh, thank you. Have a good night and safe travels. Thank you so much. Well, earlier this afternoon, we asked you to vote in our online poll. Has the increase in gas prices affected your daily commute? So here's a look at how viewers are voting so far. Most say no, they're still driving places, but we'd love to know what you think about this. If you are planning on making any changes to the way you get around, you can go to WGRZ.com slash vote and weigh in. And we know much of this has to do with the crisis in Ukraine. So we want to bring you up to date on that. Russian troops are moving further and further into the country. Today, Russian and Ukrainian diplomatic teams made a third attempt at a ceasefire this morning to allow civilians from several cities to evacuate, as well as opening humanitarian corridors as well. As the pace and the scale of the attacks intensify, so do the rush so does rather the rush to escape for millions in Ukraine. Jay Gray has the latest from the Polish-Ukrainian border. Good evening. Let's update you first on what's happening along the front lines. U.S. military intelligence now says close to 100 percent of the Russian troops who had gathered along the border of Ukraine are now in country and engaged in the fight. And with that escalated violence, that means more people are leaving Ukraine. For many hundreds of thousands, this is their first stop. We're at Prashemish train station. So they come in by train, some by bus, and, and gather here trying to then get on another train, perhaps a bus, move further into Poland or even further into Europe. Today it's been busier than we've seen during our whole time on the ground here. Very concerning uh, for officials at this border stop and others fearful that we're going to see these crowds grow uh, tremendously over the next several days and several weeks. We know at this point 1.7 million people have left Ukraine. We know that about a million of them have come to Poland. That's the very latest right now along the Poland-Ukraine border. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. Jay, thank you. Well, Two on Your Side was the only local news team to bring you original reports from Ukraine back in 1994. Former Channel 2 journalist Rich Kalman and photojournalist Jerry Gasser traveled there 28 years ago after the fall of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. The country was undergoing many changes, and Buffalo was there to help Ukraine advance its health care system then. During their special trip, they learned about the culture, the people, and their push for independence. And this week, we will revisit their journey, beginning with a special report tonight at 11. Tonight you're going to see the story of Ukraine as it was almost three decades ago. It was hoping for freedom, it was hoping for prosperity and for justice. I was there with photographer Jerry Gasser and he and I were thrilled to be able to share this part of history. And it really had touches your heart today. Tonight on Channel 2 News, you will hear and see firsthand about the hardships Ukraine faced then and the partnership the country built with Buffalo. Join us at 11 o'clock for this Two on Your Side original report.